it's not Jake from State Farm you need to thank for these cool blades. It's actually Jake from Blade HQ. Jake Knudsen. He's the person responsible for these ultra cool limited edition Spyderco blades. It is a combo video in the knife show here in TMP. Still wheezing along. I still got a lot of guns and other stuff there on the table. Just left it. Kind of fun. Kind of cool. TP9. That is a Momentum Vortec GMT watch. Awesome. Trigger scale here. Steyr M9A1. Seiko SNE391 dive watch. 226. And then the blades we're going to be talking about. Let's get to it. Have you seen this coloration yet in the military? Featuring CPM M4 steel. Have you checked it out? Now, they did a Paramilitary 2 in Natural G10, which this is called. I've always kind of thought of it as a Jade G10, but this is its natural coloration. And so if you have a Paramilitary collection, a Military collection, you might want to score this one to complete it. I know a lot of guys that really love the Spyderco products, and they will collect a certain model. Maybe it's a Para the military in this instance and it's fun you know it's fun having all the different colorations variations and the more limited they are the more special they are so if we talk about philosophies of use on all the blades i'm going to show you i wouldn't say they're like ultra rare super collectible let's just say they're you know to a minor level collectible you know because i i don't know how many jake had made of this particular one and this is c36 gm4p this BHQ exclusive. But you can't go down to another knife dealer and buy it. I don't know. And they, you know, a lot of people do exclusives. I mean, it's not just BHQ. This is just what he's cranking out now. That one that he did a ways back, the M4 Paramilitary 2, that sold for 160 and they've been sold out of that for a long time. This one will be the same way. I used to have two militaries and I did sell them. By way of admission, I did. What? I can't believe you sold your militaries. Well, I did. Uh, one, and I'm going to talk very honestly. I mean, I think these are cool, but I still think there are some quirks for me that the military is not my best carry choice for a large tactical knife. And this knife is for a large tactical purpose. Wouldn't you agree? I mean, it's it's a long blade. It's four inches long. It's 0.1, what is it, 0.1618 inches in thickness. I love the thickness and the tapering of the military. Same with the paras. They're just really nice that way. I don't mind that at all. But being forced with tip down carry is kind of kind of a showstopper just for me. Because I like it to be four-way positionable, definitely to tip up. I'm a standard righty, of course. But as you can see with the military, you're just going to be kind of stuck with this variation. You know, maybe it's changed and it'll change in the future, but that's where it is. Most guys won't care. They'll just like it. But yeah, I did sell them. Uh, the good news in selling them is they sold quickly. It These knives hold their value. We sold them, I think, through our web store to TMPers. We just said, you know, we need some more cash to buy knives. And lo and behold, it, it went within like uh, two days, I think. They are both gone. I have a lot of other knives that fill the void, though. It's not like I'm up at night crying myself to sleep saying, oh, my militaries are gone. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Compression. No, I'm thinking of the paramilitary. This isn't actually the Walker liner lock. Captured liner lock. I'm going to show you a pair of three here in a second. That's what I was thinking of. There's a timing on it. Lockup is perfect, no doubt. We haven't talked about the military forever. I mean, I think I did my original review on the military in like 2009. So this is kind of an updated para, not para, I keep wanting to say para, but a military review. Perfect jimping, top and bottom. Big old spidey hole, you can put a zip tie in. And I did see your guys' comments. I know there are people making deployment devices for it. And uh, that's cool. I went to a couple and they're always sold out. Zip ties are working great. The only time I really care is when this... This portion right here is super narrow, and so a zip tie will not stay consistently. So it's rotating, sliding around. That's when I would put in a deployment device in any Spyderco blade that needed it. Love the blade shape. It is perfect. The tip is sharp and precise. CPM M4 
is a awesome powder metallurgy steel. I've talked about it a lot. You can look it up and see exactly what it's made out of. I think I have a data sheet here somewhere if you want me to start blabbering about it, but I don't think I will. <laughs> I don't think I want to waste your time. All the steel's dull. I don't think anything is magical when you start using it for hard cutting. And look at that. This is why this thing is so lightweight, is that there's no steel liners on the opposite side of the lock. Man, I love that. That's a huge thing for this, is it's about four ounces. That's a very lightweight, a little bit over four ounces, but a very lightweight for such a capable tactical blade. Because with that traction, top and bottom, that you can lock in, that's a that's a wicked self-defense knife. It really is. I said that in 2009. The military is it's impressive. I kind of like the Spyderco Police, a knife that no one ever talks about. Maybe a little bit better than this. Just a little bit for that philosophy of use. The traction on this natural G10 is really excellent. Big old lanyard hole here. Pops out easy. Compression. I keep wanting to say compression lock. It's not. It's on the para. In some ways, though, I like the liner lock a little bit better than the compression lock because sometimes I'll pop my knife out with like a para. And let me show you an example. I have one of my heavily used paras here, maybe more than one. Here's one right here, zip tied as well. This is a special edition orange. I think this was, I think that was Cutlery Shop that did this one, this orange one. I forget. And this one has my edge on it. That's a wicked edge right there. Look at that. Zip tie, 2015. That's why I mark it so I can remember. So this thing's about three years old. Lots of use. But what I was saying with a compression lock, I'll come out and I'll, you know, I'll just grab my finger fat just a little bit. Oh, you puss. I never have that problem. Well, I do. It happens. I like the compression lock un uh, other than that. And it definitely is not enough to dissuade me. I look at the big picture and the big picture says this is awesome. I put a chunk of skateboard tape on here for higher traction for taking it out of the pocket. And here we see the four-way positionable thing that I was talking about. So four different sides. That's super excellent. Can change it around. Look how cool that looks after being worn. The orange is all dingy on it. <laughs> I love it. I love the black blades too. This pair is so awesome. God, Eric did such a great job designing it. And he updates it too. It's just Hall of Fame, bro. Hall of Fame. So that's a military model. Let's go to the next one. And you guys will probably be very stoked. Uh, actually, I'm going to go to the Para 3 next. Here we go. So it's going to be the C223GP CMO Para 3 camo. Para 3. Now this is going to be a smaller version of the regu regular paramilitary. And I'm glad I have one so I can show you the difference. So there you go. So the paramilitary 3 is actually featuring a 3 inch blade. It looks very similar, doesn't it? I mean, it's kind of deceptive. You go, well, that looks about the same, like to be the same knife. But really, they're just a little bit downsized. The para 3s are. The rest is just what I showed you. And the steel on this is CPM S30. Talked about it tons. Four-way positionable clip. And I still love that clip. It works for me. I See, I don't have to reprofile this one. I have to put on the grinder and change it. Let's see if I have one here that I had to do it. Well, here's one right here. So the Piranha Pocket Model 1, my auto that I'm carrying EDC. I had to profile that sucker. That had a big old goofy spoon bill on it that was scratching stuff when I walked by. Be careful of that. You walk by a car and you don't realize it. Your pocket clip can put a gouge in uh, paint of a vehicle so quick. So quick. I got another pair here too. Oh, here's one. It's another one coming out of carry. And Tactical Doodle coated this one so it has a bronze blade on it. That is a cool looking coloration. And sorry, I don't know if this one's for sale. It's TMP special. This is just a carry blade. It's a cast member and I put a yellow zip tie on it which looks even meaner. I carry my paras all the time, all the time. They see a lot of wear. You can see it's marked for a nut and fancy carry. I, I don't do that for camera. It's genuine, it's just so I know by looking at the blade it's not one that we're gonna sell. Cause I don't want it mixed up and going out the web store. Hey, where'd that cool paramilitary go? Yeah, dude, I didn't know you wanted it. I sold it. That's happened several times, so I got to engrave it. A sharp edge just excites me, man. I'll leave that on the table. So this is basically the same knife. Just put in the shrinking machine a little bit. The Para 3. The Para 3. 
So you can go to BHQ's website. I will put the links below. I may put some Amazon links there too, just to make it fair and square with everybody. Uh, BHQ doesn't pay me for this at all. It's just I like the shop and Jake is totally cool. I like Jake. So he's like, hey, I got some special edition Spider Co's. Are you interested? And I was like, yeah, I'm interested because I love Spider Co's. Spider Co's my favorite brand knife ever. Ever. I carry more Spider Co's than I carry anything else. Oh, look at how cool that looks. Holy crap, that looks awesome. God, that's freaking awesome. Yes, I can still get excited with the blades. I'm not even looking at the guns. I'm just looking at the knives. Next up, speaking of excitement, you guys will probably like this even more. How about a special edition Tenacious BHQ? You can see the number right there. Here we go. It's also camo and black blade. Has it been offered anywhere else? I don't know. I don't keep up. I don't know, but I like this one. And there's a lot of colorations of Tenacious that have been issued, like brown with a black blade, green with a black blade, satin, brown, oranges, blues. So I wouldn't say, you know, this is like rock in the world, but it's cool. It's and it's affordable. I think he's selling this one for 50 bucks on the website, this special edition. So, you know, worth it. 8CR 13 MOV, same steel if you care. And the Tenacious and I go way back. <laughs> if you know, I have my Tenacious scar still. That's a Tenacious scar right there, dudes. I wear it proudly. It's that bloody video that's still out there if you care. What do you think about that camo handle handle with the black blade? So we kind of have some representations. There's satin. There's burnt bronze. That's a Cerakote. And then we got the black blade. Same camo handle. I like it. So we have the ambitious, and I always have to remind myself of the, these. That's a two and a quarter inch blade. Persistence is two and three quarter inch blade. This tenacious is 3.4 inches in length. And the resilience, which I do have here, I think, here it is, is a whopping manly four and a quarter inches. And no, I don't have a special edition to show you on that. Although we have coated one, I don't know where it's at. So this is just a resilience for the heck of it. That's a really nice high value tactical blade. Totally nice. It's got a lot of reach on that. Very excellent. Sorry, M9. Love you, mean it, but we gotta make some room for some blades. So that's a tenacious in black. And then we're gonna look at a few more details as I show you this same knife in satin coloration. Here you go, what do you think? That kind of pops just a little bit more, doesn't it? With the, the satin blade, it looks good. And then you have the clip. This one was blackened and this one is shiny. I do like, you know, subdued clips. I've always said that I do because I, I don't like to be seen as a knife carrier. It, I don't dig it at all. I prefer to keep it under the rug. Four-way positionable, just like all this series features. Ambitious persistence, tenacious resilience, like that. Here's a centering on these, perfect. Timing on this one, perfect. The only criticism I've had over the years with the Tenacious is that it's really broad. So for doing detail cutting, I find that I really would like a narrower knife. And I'll show you that Pocket Model 1 by way of representation, just because I'm, I'm rocking it again today. See that? So that's narrow. I can get in there and do detail cuts. Maybe opening certain packages is easier. Just a, just a little heads up. Good belly on it. Full flat ground. Nice big old spidey hole with enough material which will lock in that zip tie and the jimping on these dudes is really good i can't remember if i criticized that in the in the years previous i think i did i was like ah the gimping as we jokingly call it needed some work but on these so far so good so there you go we've got one two three I think that's BHQ Special Edition. That might be available elsewhere. I'm talking the Paramilitary 3. I'm not super sure. But all the knives are awesome. My favorite of these, which I would carry the most, and this is just me, is the Paramilitary 2. This one right here. I'll carry that all day long. Uh, the 3 is good. I think that's a great EDC blade. But to me, these two knives are so similar. I would go and have gone with a pair this size right here. You know, pretty excellent. And once in a while, I will rock the resilience and then I'll just pair it like I'm doing today 
with a smaller EDC knife. So my combo today is kind of the Piranha Model 1 and then the Manix 2 Lightweight in orange. And this has S90 on it. I reviewed this separately. You can look that up in the playlist. Orange and orange. I didn't, I didn't really plan it that way, but that's the way it worked out. This is my favorite clip they make. See, this is having a little spinning going on. See that? So I was thinking it was locking on. It ain't. Look at that. So that's obnoxious. Maybe I will get a deployment device for that. Whatever. Easy enough to correct. Go tell BHQ that nothing fancy sent you. Again, links below. These are great Hall of Fame knives. Got to get to work with other stuff. See ya.